Hello and welcome to the Irish Aesthete. Today I want to begin telling you the story of a member of what is probably Ireland's best known family, the Guinnesses. Now there are a lot of Guinnesses out there. Fecundity seems to run in their blood. There used to be a popular advertisement proclaiming Guinness is good for you. So perhaps they've reproduced on the premise that the more Guinnesses, the better for all of us. Certainly some of them have been very good indeed for this country. Here, for example, is a statue of Sir Benjamin Lee Guinness, grandson of the founder of the famous brewery. The statue is located in a park immediately adjacent to St. Patrick's Cathedral in Dublin. In 1860, Sir Benjamin offered to restore the building entirely and at his own expense, provided nobody interfered with his plans. He got his way and duly did so, at a personal cost of some £150,000. But since by then he was well on the way to becoming the richest man in Ireland, he could afford the expenditure. Sir Benjamin had three sons, of which the eldest, Arthur Edward, might have been expected to take over the reins of the family enterprise. In fact, it was Sir Benjamin's third son, Edward Cecil, who took on the role. Not so unusual as this might first appear, since Sir Benjamin had also been a third son. In business, primogenitor is not always the best policy. It was Edward who floated Guinnesses on the London Stock Exchange in 1886 and thereby made himself the richest man in Ireland. And it was Edward also who laid out the park beside St. Patrick's Cathedral where his father's statue can be found today. Edward Guinness would eventually become first Earl of Ivor, and his former townhouse in Dublin is today Ireland's Department of Foreign Affairs. The building overlooks St Stephen's Green, the present incarnation of which is due to his elder brother, the previously mentioned Arthur Edward. St Stephen's Green is now much frequented by the general public, not least thanks to its charming character, exemplified by this lodge located at the southwest corner of the site. But until the last quarter of the 19th century, St. Stephen's Green was not only a private park, but it also looked quite different. First enclosed in the 1660s, the space which runs to 27 acres was left largely unadorned, as can be seen on this mid 18th century map. Even by the time James Moulton came to make a print of St. Stephen's Green at the end of the 18th century, other than a tree lined walk around the perimeter, the park had little to offer by way of landscaping. Although by this time a bronze equestrian statue of George II designed by John van Nost the Younger and placed on top of a high granite pedestal had been erected in the centre of the site. This survived until May 1937 when it was blown up. In 1814 control of St Stephen's Green passed into the hands of commissioners for the householders who lived around the park and the space was then redesigned by the city surveyor, Arthur Neville, incorporating winding paths, more plants and railings to replace the exterior walls. But only key holders were allowed inside. Now, St Stephen's Green occupies a very prominent location in the centre of Dublin, and the notion that access to its facilities should only be permitted to a handful of house owners was understandably something of an irritant to everyone else, as well as to the city authorities. This was where Arthur Edward Guinness comes into the picture. In 1877, while serving as an MP, he initiated an Act of Parliament which would open St Stephen's Green's Park to everybody. Once this Act was successfully passed, he personally paid for laying out the space as we see it today, designed by landscape architect William Shepherd, who for many years had worked as assistant to the great Ninian Niven. His influence can be seen here. There's quite a difference between how the park looked in the 18th century and how it looks today. That's thanks to Arthur Edward Guinness, who paid for the entire cost, as I say, of this transformation. Already a baronet, in 1880 he was elevated to the peerage as Baron Ardalorn of Ashford. The reason for this title will be explained in due course. But, 
like all gifts, this one came with strings attached, as was discovered in 1913, when Sir Hugh Lane proposed that his new Municipal Gallery of Modern Art, designed by Edwin Lutyens, be constructed within the park of St Stephen's Green. It turned out that as a result of his munificence, Lord Ardalorn retained a lifelong veto over what happened on the site, and on this occasion he flatly refused to allow the gallery to be built here. One reason for this was that 20 years earlier Dublin Corporation, as an expression of gratitude for his largesse, arranged to have a statue of Lord Ardalorn, one not dissimilar to that of his father in St Patrick's Park, put up on the west side of St Stephen's Green, looking across to the Royal College of Surgeons. Lane's proposed gallery would have required its removal to somewhere else. Beware the whims of the wealthy. In the next episode, I want to talk about Lord Ardalorn's marriage and the speculation that it has excited ever since. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Aesthete. Goodbye. Thank you.